Hello everyone, you joined me in the Shroko. Um, I'm making a video that I sort of hoped I wouldn't have to make, hoped I'd ever reach this point, um, hoped I'd never have to admit this or anything. I'm taking the coilovers off because I just can't cope anymore. If you can hear what sounds like an exhaust blowing, you are correct. Uh, I think my exhaust manifold is blowing, but anyway. Yeah, it's in fact, it's four years this week since I put the coilovers on. And I'm currently on my way to the unit. This is the route that I take on my way to the unit. It's quite a rural country road. It's a lovely scenic route, but it's um, parts of it. Parts of it have not been paved for about 60 years. Um, we're now leaving the last paved bit and we're now on old surface now. And this is the route that I take to the unit because it's the quickest. If I don't, I have to go through the town centre, but that's not much better anyway. Um, and as you can see, it's not very comfortable in this car. And I'm honestly sick of it. <laughs> it's sort of ruining the car for me a bit. And I kind of don't take it out as much anymore because it's just, it's just pain. Well, not actual physical pain, you know, I'm not getting like, Press spine syndrome. Not that I wouldn't know anyway, because I'm so short. But um, I just, I just don't want to take it out because all I'm doing is, instead of enjoying driving the car, I'm just constantly looking at the road. Where's the bumps? Where's the potholes? Oh, I best not go that way. It's going to bottom out. I'm just sick of being thrown around, basically, and I don't feel like it's doing the car any good either. It's all well. It used to, it used to rub a lot on the front, but I've raised it a bit now. But yes, I'm taking the coilovers off. I mean, they're only cheapies anyway. I think they're, they're pro sport coil lovers and to be fair I was I was pretty impressed with them when I got them they're not awful um, I've, I've definitely I've definitely had worse but I've just yeah I think I'm just gonna go for lowering springs so yeah we're on the way to the unit to take the coil lovers off and try lowering springs I am admitting defeat after exactly four years it's time to call it quits so this is everything that will be fitting today. Uh, I've got some Bilstein, Bilstein, whatever you say, uh, B4 shocks, I think. These were from Heritage, and these are the fronts, and then we've got the, the rears down there. I've also bought new bolts for everything, because I remember when I put the coilovers on, I think on the front, the, um, the bolts were a bit mismatched. They weren't, they were just kind of like random bolts on and the rears, I had to cut the bolts off because they were seized in. So it just has some generic bolts in on the back. So I've ordered all new bolts on the back. I've got new bump stops um, as well. And then I've got my lowering springs here. Uh, the only thing I didn't buy was top mounts, but I put new ones on when I put the coilovers on and they're still like brand new. So that, and I did not want to fork out any more money than I already have. Um, I think, all in all, all of this probably cost me probably about 500 quid. Um, not great, but still cheaper than, you know, like a, a really, really fancy set of coilovers. They're like seven, eight plus, or up to a grand if you're looking at KW. So this is my, um, this is my levelling up from, you've got, you got cheap coilovers, decent lowering springs, and then you've got decent coilovers. So I'm going... I'm going to the next stage up. <laughs> I couldn't justify the cost of um, really expensive coilovers because I just don't do enough mileage in this car. So let's let's get all this fitted and hopefully I won't have um, a horrible ride anymore. Right, I don't know how much of you, this you can see from there, but oh, that's a bit close. Um, but yeah, so I'm still in pretty good nick, these coilovers, so. You know, I'll sell them on, they're still adjustable and everything. So I adjusted them the other week. Now I've got some Bulldog BDX. Uh, thank you to the guys at Bulldog BDX who gave me this tin and a pen. I didn't realise they gave me a pen. Yeah, I'm not sponsored or anything like that, but I'm... Do I need to... Am I doing this wrong? Am I stupid? Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, guys, this isn't a good start, is it? Ah! 
There we go. I just needed a bit of <laughs> a bit more pressure for this first time. But yeah, I've heard very good things about this stuff. But just never got a chance to buy it, so when I was handed some free at the NEC, I would very gladly give it a go. What's it smell like? Oh. <coughs> so <laughs> let's get these bolts out. I wouldn't normally just good everything on an old car, but I know these haven't been off, been on that long. So this should be okay. stuff Jesus right now I've got two 13 mils on the top and this should just drop out I hope I find that again and there we go easy as that so yeah, they're not in too bad condition. Slight corrosion and a tiny bit of surface rust on there, but I think they'll clean up and make someone a nice pair of coilovers. But sadly not for me. Right, in theory I shouldn't need to compress it too much. If at all, but I don't want to take any risks. That doesn't fit. No, it doesn't. I'm aiming it over there because there's just a wall over there. There we go. I don't think I needed to do that, but. I just wanted to be safe. Where's my note gone? There it is. Well, we've encountered our first problem. I didn't realise, well, I never thought that this little sort of cup that goes on here is for the coilovers. But obviously, the lowering springs are a lot bigger diameter than that. And I don't have the correct size cup to go on that because, as you can see, there's, there's nothing for the spring to sit in on there. So I'm actually missing some parts, so that's great. Um, I was already meant to be doing this last week, but I didn't order my springs in time. So my springs didn't come until earlier this week. So now I'm trying again this weekend and I've realized I still don't have the right parts. <laughs> so yeah, looks like um, I'm gonna have to wait another week now. I've found the bits that I need on Heritage. Um, on VW Heritage, well it's not called VW Heritage anymore, is it? It's just heritage parts. So I found the bits that I need, but obviously they won't come today. So I've got to wait another week. So it looks like the coin lovers are going back on for another week. <laughs> oh dear.
Okay, so I'm back to being on my own at the unit and I think the uh, motocrossers have left or have quietened down now, so back to normal filming. Um, the fronts are now done, so we're going to attempt the rears. Now, when I fit the coilovers originally, um, the suspension was like C solid in the axle and I had to cut it out with an angle grinder because the rubbers had seized and the balls wouldn't come out. Um, so. In theory, I shouldn't have to do that again. Let's hope not. <laughs> I don't know how much you'll be able to see of this. It's quite hard to get a good position. Oh, this is gonna drop, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> a smidge. Right, well, we're already ahead of where we were when I originally put the coilovers on. So, this is the top half we have to get off. I'm wondering if I take the parcel shelf off, can I get away with attempting to gun it out? Let's see. No, I don't think it's gonna work, is it? <laughs> In an ideal world, this won't spin and it'll just do as it's told, but I doubt that's what's going to happen. Is it coming loose? We get a spanner. Or is it spinning? Ooh, it is coming loose. Oh! It'd be a lot easier if I wasn't five feet tall. Why did I have to jack the back of the car up? There we go. There's going to be a lot of motorbike noises because there's a motorbike going around. But I'm going to try this again. We're going to film it properly this time now that I actually know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> got shocker, spring cup, plastic thingy mabobbid thing. I need the spring, yes. No, nope, need the spring and the bump stops and the, the shield. I think it's the same on both sides. So I'm just putting it so the writing is upwards. That's that on. I need to put this little washer here where that circlet goes. Now I need my upper spring, no, I need that. Oh. God. No, I'm actually delirious at this point. That needs to go on first. It's... I'm very sweaty. It's getting late. I'm getting a little bit hungry. And it's not a good recipe and I've just completely lost my mind doing the other side because I just had a complete brain fart and just couldn't figure it out. But now I have. Sure, Jan. So that's that. Now I need the upper spring cup and I need to modify this spacer because it doesn't fit. You see it only goes down to there. It should sit there, but it only goes down to there. So instead of waiting another week for even more parts, I've just drilled the other one. It's only like a millimetre or two off, so I just drilled it. drilled it out a bit it's 
It's a little wonky, but it'll do. It's also very hot, so. So that goes on the, the upper spring cup. Make sure it's positioned properly. Then this, which is still quite warm. Ow. Then I have to compress it just so I can't get the nut on. Okay, if only I had some spring compressors or something that I could do with this with. <laughs> right, that's that one. Right, that's on. That's still in its spot, pretty much. Get this in here. Nope, nope, nope. I need this first. Then we go up here. Hmm. This is going to be a bit tricky with the other side now built up. Getting too current way, I'm getting excited because now I actually know what I'm doing. Kind of. Ow. Do any of us really know what we're doing? In general? I don't think so. Please excuse the mess in my boot. Now this goes on top here. Like so, that goes on there, that winds on there. Hopefully it won't spin. There we go, that's on. Now I just need to bolt in the bottom and we will have rear suspension again. I will take that out from there and I will shove it over to the drum instead. I think I'm now officially the last person here. Everyone else has got a life and has gone home because it's about half six on a Saturday. I mean we would have done a lot quicker if I had more than two brain cells and um, actually knew what the hell I was doing. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it's been four years since I did this, so I don't really, and I, I chucked everything away. Oh, I've not put the washer on again. I did that on the other side. I don't know if it, is it actually meant to have a washer or not, but... Better to have one and not need it, than need it and not have it. Um, but yeah, I just chucked everything, because I was like, oh, I'm not going to need that again. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the rears had to be cut out. And it was all rusty and knackered anyway, but... I didn't really pay attention to how it went. Well, I did, but it was four years ago. Come on. I can better remember what I did yesterday. There we go. That side took two hours, and this side took about half an hour. Go figure. Now I can put the wheels back on, drop it down and see if it looks like a monster truck. Um, I heard 
I'm, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's not lowered, is it? That's not even lowered a little bit. The front doesn't look too bad, but that's, that's, that's looking not right there. So it's a week or two later, and as you can see, there is still a very large gap for the back. Front is all right. The back is lost in outer space. Um, so also I've forgot to set up the camber properly on the front because I got a bit excited. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to sort that out because it is all over the place at the moment on the road. So we're going to have to sort out the camber, which is just make sure that the um, off center bolts are the same. And then on the back, I've been asking about what people think. Um, I did wonder if this, maybe it's the uh, bump stops, because I know that that's an issue on a lot of the Fiat stuff. Um, so I'm gonna take, strip the rears down again, take the bump stops off, chop them in half and see if that helps. If not, then I don't know, because I, re I really don't want to go back to coil overs because other than the fact that the camper's out and it's jumping all over the road, it does actually ride better now. Um, but I just, I can't, I can't cope with that. I stopped at Morrison's on the way here and as I was walking back to it at the car park, I was just like, oh my God, it just looks awful. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I can't, I can't live with that. I'm sorry. I, we're going to have to do something about that. I don't know if I can, I mean, if that doesn't fix it, then maybe buy some more expensive coil offers, but then I've wasted like so, I'm, I don't know. We'll see. These are the offset bolts that you have on the front. You have one offset bolt each, both sides have an offset washer, and that's to set your camera up. And depending on where, obviously, the bigger side is, is where your camera will be. Now, I got a bit giddy, didn't I? And I gunned all this up without thinking. Um, and what I was trying to do was get the hub where it was before, because you can see um, in there where the strut was against the hub before. So I just used that as an indicator and didn't bother looking at the washers because I got a bit giddy. So on the uh, offside, driver's side, right side, whatever you want to call it, the, uh, the end of the washer is at the bottom. And when we come round to the near side, passenger side, left side, it's at the top. So yeah, that's that's probably why the car drives like absolute crap. Um, I mean, on the plus side, my steering wheel is straight because um, I put the white steering on the white steering wheel back on a few splines out by accident um, when I put it back on after the MOT. Um, but it, it it's straight now, but <laughs> it just handles like crap. So um, I think if I remember rightly, when I did the coilovers. Um, the big end was at the bottom, like the driver's side is, so I'm just going to adjust this side so it matches the other side and then hopefully it won't drive like crap. Um, but I'm, I'm still going to get it like professional, like properly aligned with a actual um, proper gauges or whatever. Um, it's just, it's always a good practice when you've got new suspension anyway. I did it when I put the coilovers on, so I'll do it again now that these are on. But I don't want to <laughs> turn up with my washers like that because that's just embarrassing, isn't it? Um, so yeah, don't get too excited, people. Make sure that you remember to get your camber right. <laughs> Otherwise, the car will drive like an absolute pig. So I'm just going to loosen it off. And we're just going to rotate it. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see when I do this, actually. Alright, so I'll loosen the bottom one as well. Otherwise, it won't move. Right. Let's see if it'll do it now. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see from there, but when I, if you watch the disc as I move this, it moves the camber. Oops. I'm trying to show this, but I don't know if it's showing. Can you see that? Can the viewers at home see that? 
it's moving that bit. So I had it there where I need it. There. So let me just match it with the other side. It also has in and out movement as well, which is where I was trying to line up where the hub was before. So hopefully this will be correct now. So the washer is fixed to the bolt, so makes it a lot easier. Do I talk these? No. I talk them to FT, thank you very much. I only talk wheel bolts, hub nuts, not Ian, actual hub nuts, um, engine based bolts, but eh. in the real world most things just get done FT. If you don't know what FT means, it rhymes with ducking tight. So let's just, let's compare sides again. So now you can see the larger end of the washer at the bottom. And we go around. And the larger end at the bottom. I mean, it's probably not exactly the same. So now hopefully it won't drive like an absolute pig. Now let's strip the rears down and pray to the gods above that it's the bump stops that are causing it to sit so high. Right, I didn't bother filming taking the rear shocks off and everything because you've already seen me do that. But um, whilst I was underneath undoing the bolt here and just looking at the strut, um, I realised what my problem is. And I realised that there's probably a lot of you now who saw what I was doing earlier in the video and was screaming at the screen, telling me, oh my god, Kay, why have you done that? Um, this is upside down. I was just looking and I saw that and I was like, that's upside down. And that would explain why the spring would never sit properly on it. Because it's not supposed to. Um, yeah. You know, if I had more than two brain cells, I would be unstoppable. I really would. But alas, here we are. I may proclaim to be many things on this channel, but I will never ever proclaim to be smart. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, in my defense, I didn't have the old shocks to go against. The coil lovers are very different. Um, if I was doing a direct swap from standard suspension to these, I probably would have noticed. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Oh dear. I'm just glad that these rears don't need um, spring compressors. <laughs> that makes the job so much easier. See, I mean, in my defence, it fits. It fits perfectly both ways. But yeah, does that sit better now? <laughs> oh wow! Look at that. It has no room to slide off anywhere now. Anyways, um. I actually did it on purpose to test if you guys noticed, so um, if you didn't notice, you lost. So, yeah. Oh wow, look at that, the spring fits perfectly and is not trying to come off its seat base because the seat base is not upside down anymore. That is amazing. <laughs> uh. 
I might actually grease this up a bit because I could hear a squeaking on the way here. So it looks a bit dry, so I might just put a bit of looby lube on it. Just a little bit, not too much. Let's try again, shall we? <laughs> the moment of truth, number two. Let's see what it sits like now. I mean, it can't get any worse, can it? Surely. <laughs> moving. Hang on. <laughs> I mean, it's better, I think. Still not great. Got oh, too short. Maybe I need to eat a few more pies to really weigh it down, but I'm trying to get it to settle a bit more because it was... Um, I mean, it's better than it was. It's still, still quite a gap compared to the coil lovers, but I guess I'm always going to have a, a gap. But, um... It's definitely lower, but it still could do a bit, a bit lower. But it might need to settle a bit more. Maybe I just need to get used to not being a stance kid anymore and get used to arch gap, kind of a boring adult now. Well, it's better. I suppose I better take it out and see if it still drives all right now. So, we are now on the drive home, again, um, was it worth it, has it improved the ride, what does it drive like, have I fixed the camber, uh, well yes, it now doesn't want to wander all over the place, when I, when I weave like this, I can feel it, before if I went like that nothing happened, uh, the steering wheel is back to being off centre again, so that's good. Um, and I mean it's still bumpy obviously it's Lauren Springs but and I mean it's probably hard to tell because that mount shakes anyway but does it ride better yes <laughs> I the first time I drove it home when I did it the other week um, it, it took me a while to actually notice that the ride was different because it was I don't know, it was just so pleasant. I, it suddenly dawned on me that I wasn't being bumped around everywhere. So, um, yeah. It's nice to just sort of go along and, I mean, that was a manhole cover then. It was barely even, barely even a flinch. I mean, it probably rattled a lot on the phone because it's in a phone holder that's not very good. I don't really have a proper mount, but like, I'm going down these little manhole covers and little tiny potholes and stuff like that and it's just, it just feels normal. It's nice to just ride normally now, you know. Now I'm coming up to a bit of uneven road. Uh, normally I have to wince when I go over this, but you know what, I'm going to just, <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on, that was like, I, I'm not even that bothered. But yeah, was it worth it? I mean, a few more miles are needed yet, but honestly, from a comfort perspective, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it might it might not be as low as it was. It might not be slow. Ooh, wow, you really are shaking, aren't you? I am so sorry. Um, I mean, yeah, I am kind of sad that it's not as low as it was. And it's not, as, you know, I'm, it's probably not going to be as cool on Instagram anymore. And I guess 
if I rolled up to play as classic, people wouldn't really look at it as well as much as perhaps the other Shrokos that are on air ride, but I have no disrespect to the people who do that. I mean, they look great, you know, but I enjoy, well, my angle of car modification is like, I want to do things and make it look like it could have just come from the 80s. It could have just come from the year 1990. Like, I like to pretend, I like to LARP that I'm a 25 year old in 1990 that's just bought herself a Scirocco and she wants to mod it. So, you know, air ride and stretch tires and stuff like that doesn't really, I mean, I appreciate it on other cars. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the vibe that I'm going for with this car. Definitely not because I can't afford air ride. So now we're going to go on that road that I said that I go on. That's really, really bumpy because it's not been resurfaced for about 25,000 years. Um, so let's see what it feels like. Like that was a pretty big metal cover. It made quite a noise, but I didn't go. <laughs> so, yeah. Once I get over the fact that it's not as low as it was anymore, I'm sure I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll be happy. You know, I'm not like wincing going down these roads anymore. Now here's a really, really bumpy part. Oh, me! <laughs> when I had the coil I was on then, I'd have hit my head on the roof and all sorts. I'd have been over the other side of the car. My seatbelt jammer would have kicked in. If you're not bothered about being the lowest of the low and stuff like that and if you just want to have a car that just looks nice handles nice and drives all right then yes i would say decent lowering springs and shocks are better than cheap coilovers from a comfort and practicality point of view if you don't care like i didn't five years five, four years ago then by all means go for it but yeah, it just took the fun out of driving the car for me and I just... And nobody else wanted to go in it either. Because I was like, I'm not ready in that, it's horrible. Now I'm not like, ashamed to give anybody a lift in it. Or if anybody says they want to drive it, I can now say, yeah, go for it. Instead of, I don't think you'll like it. <laughs> I remember Steph asked me, uh, I drive a classic, asked me multiple times if she could drive this. And I kept saying no, because it drives horribly. And I was like, you won't like it. It's not a good example of a Scirocco, you'll, you'll hate it. So, Steph, if you're watching and you want to drive it, then you can drive it now if you want. It doesn't drive like crap anymore. So I'm going to end this now because I'm getting close to my house and I don't want to dox myself. So, um, thank you for watching. Um, thank you. Hopefully you weren't put off by my sheer stupidity of what I did with the rear shockers. Um, just because we're professionally trained does not mean we actually have brain cells.